Hi everybody, it's John Jay. Thanks for joining. I know I'm about a minute early, so I'm just going to tell you a quick story. So this morning I helped a local client uh, open an account at Bank of America. And it was fast. I mean, I think she did the account in 30 minutes. <clears throat> but it's it was one of those things where, I mean, I went with her and sat there just because, you know, I was able to do that. I can't do that for everybody. And part of the reason was because she didn't speak very good English. She spoke a foreign language. But anyways, um, I had all, you know the same documents I gave you guys, I gave the bank. And then what made it easy was I made her the only owner and it was a state-based company. So it was really easy to do. Uh, so anyways, uh, that went really smoothly. I know that um, I know that uh, when you guys are doing it, <laughs> you're in one state and then you're resident in another state and you're doing it over the internet. And so yeah, that's always gonna add some difficulty, but so what, I mean, we always get through it, but I just like that experience. That was one of the better ones I've had. So uh, in fact, we just had a totally bogus address for the uh, the principal address. It was a, it was an office space that was just up the road, and they didn't question it. I think it was just because everything was local. In fact, she even had uh, the account signer had a foreign. She had a, a Texas driver's license <clears throat> with an address in Texas, and she's the woman still opened the account and told me she would wait until I give her a P.O. box to send the debit card to. So that, what better can you have? I mean, with all the crap that's going on with the banks, it was nice to see that. So I just wanted to share that with you. So like, little story there. But anyways, um, I'm really excited about this. I had a, a motivating, uh, I had a motivating uh, discussion, uh, I think it was yesterday, yeah, with a couple, and they were serious. They were putting together a plan, and they are going to go what we call uh, in real estate investing bird dogging. They're going to go find some property and they're going to make a deal. And it's not like, you know, free money. I mean, there's no such thing. You got to work for it. It's a numbers game. And just because some person is in foreclosure doesn't mean he wants to talk to you, you know, because there's 15 other people that have sent him letters and he doesn't want people. He's very self-conscious. He doesn't want people to know that he's in foreclosure and he's discovering how he has zero privacy and always had zero privacy. And then you come along and say, hey, I've got a deal for you. And he's like, well, you're crazy. You know, so there's always this situation where there's money to be made and it looks easy. It looks like, hey, I can do this. I can, without much risk, financial risk, but it's a numbers game and it takes work. And you have to find a motivated seller that's nothing new. This is like real estate investing 101. You got to find a motivated seller, usually somebody who's in a financially distressed piece of real estate. It's usually residential. You can, you can look at multifamily. I would look at an apartment complex. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look for an apartment complex. I'll go through the bankruptcy records. Find out who's in bankruptcy that it has an apartment complex. What real estate investment firm has an apartment complex that's bringing in the bankruptcy court. You know, <clears throat> and I'll try to negotiate something with the title holder. Uh, Strip malls. Now, I can have I can get a strip mall here. I could probably get one with no special knowledge. But then what? I mean, there's a reason why. If someone wants to get rid of a strip mall, there's a reason why we're mowing them down here. We're right here in Orlando, in Northeast Orlando, we're plowing them under literally. Um, they've been around for decades, and now they're plowing them under. Uh, I don't see anything new going up. I do see lots of apartments. Uh, so, anyways, on easements. Let me just uh, summarize again what we're talking about. If you have a, like in the suburbs, like I am, a little single family, you know, where you got the, the lawn in the front, the back, and then on the side, you got your utilities, you got your water meter and your cable and all this stuff. The cable guy can walk up my driveway, doesn't have to ask me. Uh, cable guy can walk up my driveway and do his thing. Now, sometimes he'll ask me for permission to come into the house for something. No problem. You know. Now, if I sell the house or it gets foreclosed on and the next title holder comes and does the same thing I'm doing with the house, lives there, that easement is still there. I say it that way because I'm trying to explain this to some of you over the phone. You're calling me. You're setting up uh, meetings with me. And you're still not understanding the power we have. It's really amazing. Um, so that easement does not go away. Title holders change. Banks don't care about easements. They just care about using the property as collateral. So imagine if 
the title holder who has the right to give the easement, because that's where it came from in the beginning. The developer came from the developer. It's always coming from the title holder. So the title holder conveys an easement to this company, right? And so in the easement, it explains whoever's affiliated with this company or has permission of the company can use the property in the following manner. And let me just summarize how that might look like. The property can be used in the same manner in which the title holder was used. I just summarized it. Now, I'm not going to write them that way. I'm going to put it in nice paragraphs, and there's going to be lots of detail. There's a lot of things I got to put in there. All right. Um, but imagine that, right? So here's what you've done you've, you've conveyed, or let's say transferred or moved over rights you had as a title holder to rights as an easement holder. We call this the servient estate. The title holder is the dominant estate. All kinds of wackiness can happen to the title. Foreclosures, lawsuits, property tax, blah, 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 mechanics, liens. None of that affects the easement, right? So the easement, the exercise of the rights of the easement can, cannot be impeded or impaired by anybody because he'd be trespassing. So you've just embodied all the rights you would have as title holder now as the one who has possession according to a right of easement. The, the new title holder is powerless to change that. The new title holder is powerless to interfere with your exercise of the property. And if you're using it as the same as before, that means you still live there, you still watch TV after work, you still eat dinner there. Who's gonna move in and do that same thing? Nobody, because it would impair or impede your easement rights, you see? And the title comes and goes. Titles come and go. I don't know. Maybe they sell the title. Who knows? Maybe they, whatever. Maybe somebody doesn't pay the taxes again. It gets foreclosed on. Who cares? You're still there. The easement gives you all the rights. And the police and the courts will enforce it. They don't have a choice. They have to enforce it for everyone, including themselves. And so they will for you. So then what do you do? Well, we can do that, sure. But what about using this for very constructive purposes? As you know, the farmers are suffering. They're having their farms raided. Uh, you can look at the news. They're being destroyed. Imagine if, if you went to those farms and you made a joint venture with them and you told them that you would you know, protect their property and you explain, you could tell them the details, they're business owners and, and record an easement. It's just a piece of paper and, and secure their rights to use their property the same way they had as a title holder, which is now being threatened, you secured as an easement holder. And because you understand how that works, you can work with them in that sense. It's worth a lot of money for one, all right? Maybe it's worth rent, I don't know. I mean, whatever debt you get the title holder out of, property taxes, IRS liens, judgment liens, you get him out of that debt, he would compensate you, right? That's part of the deal. If you can't pay your full mortgage, then pay me half of it. Most people can handle that. Now I've got debt-free cash flow. All I got to do is sell the owner on that. I got to sell the owner on that. That's it. It's a sales job. And I say that's it. That is it. But <clears throat> it's a sales job. People are going to look at you funny. Because, you know, I hate to say, I mean, this is my, this is my derogatory term it's stupid consumers okay stupid consumers people do stupid things i've done stupid things people do stupid things they'll say well you're not an attorney i have to talk to my attorney about this the attorney's going to talk about it okay so just be just be aware so you want to get the easement so you want to have it all written up you want to kind of know what you want what you're doing okay you can have a generic version and then you want to get in there and have them sign it you can have a notary witness it i would make it a big deal Take, take the person out to lunch, take the family out to lunch, whoever the title holder is, those are your decision makers, and then do that, right? Make your deal. Now, some of these deals, you just, you get an easement on the property and that person who's there has to go, okay? Make sure you make those arrangements. You still have the right to take possession because there's a trespass issue and there's the ejectment issue, right? Eviction, you can evict somebody. Uh, and there's a trespass issue. So if, again, someone's interfering with easement rights, you have a trespass issue, see, and it's civil. So you have a remedy, even if you're not the title holder. You have a remedy against the title holder. It's pretty powerful. So here's the plan, right? So 
nothing new. I'm not reinventing the wheel. You need to get the homeowner's attention if it's going to be residential. You need to get the property manager's attention, easily the property manager, if it's going to be commercial. How do I do that? I'm going to give you guys a secret. Check this out on the internet. Look at this phrase. It's called the yellow letter. The yellow letter. You probably received some. In fact, some of you out there probably used them. The yellow letter. It's a white number 10 business envelope with a yellow loose leaf, you know, the, the yellow writing tab, tablet type paper that you tear off. That's folded three three times as a business letter inside the white envelope, you see. So when this shows up in someone's mailbox, the theory is that it looks way different than every other white envelope people get with white paper inside, right? There's a typewritten everywhere, okay? So you get this, it doesn't have to be the loose leaf paper. I would use yellow paper and I would use a cursive font and I would write my sales letter on there. It would be like one pager Are you done? in blue ink. Nine one two four Lacosta. And I would have that. I would have that uh, uh, mail. Okay, direct mail, and I would send it to everybody in the neighborhood. Just do a hundred. Just do a hundred, right? If you do postcard, that's fine. You could do the postcard to the to the uh, homeowner. That's fine. But just remember, if he's in distress, he's gotten already fifteen postcards, or maybe you're the first of fifteen. Whatever. So just keep that in mind. Now you can use software. So we have public records. Those are laborious. You get public records. You go find out what's going on with real estate. And you find out who's in foreclosure. It's all public record. Pre-foreclosure, foreclosure. Pre-foreclosure Pre means that the, the borrower missed a payment or two. Or maybe he's in default or almost to become a default. Technically, pre-foreclosure means he's not yet in default. I think they misuse the term. But in any case, pre-foreclosure is a phrase that's used to describe people who would be in financial distress with a piece of real estate. You want those people. That's your demographic. You want people that are foreclosure. You want people that want to sell. You want people, I mean, all kinds of situations. Maybe a person's struggling with property taxes, right? That's a big thing. Go look and see how many people at the, at the county appraiser's office, the tax appraiser's office, um, haven't paid their uh, property tax. There's your mailing list right there. That's all public record. Now, there are services that collect this data and sell it to you, and rightfully so, because it takes time and, and money and, and ingenuity. You have to use software and things. You have to make a contract with the county and be that one that grabs the data, and then you sell it. Makes sense. It makes it easier for you. Remember, um, sometimes it's worth paying for someone else's service rather than doing it yourself. It's a better use of your time. Uh, there's a, a, some software you might want to try. Now, you can get the free version, but there's the paid version called Home Suite. I'm sorry, it's called Home Snap because of double P. Home Snap. Home Snap. You take a snap photo of a home, and immediately you get you get things like the debt service, the tax liens, mortgage liens. I mean, you, you get everything on the property. This is crazy because years ago, I mean, I'm talking not, not too long ago, within 10 years, people used to have to find this information themselves. It was very difficult. It was expensive. You had to hire people. You had to have staff. You had to have someone work at the county, at the clerk of the court's office. Uh, in fact, I remember when it was in microfiche because I used to do that. I used to go look at that stuff. So now we can get software where someone's already figured this out. HomeSnap is one version, one example of that. You guys can probably find more if you don't know already. Get some of the software and try it out and, and go and find property that's in distress. Go put up signs. Um, my uh, partner, he had this really big thing going in, uh, in here in Florida, Central Florida, where he had these signs everywhere called We Buy Ugly Houses. And it was this caveman uh, saying that, okay? It was a, just a, you know, a cartoon type thing. And it went really well. He did really well with that one. And uh, We Buy Ugly Houses. And he would just go there and make a, you know, a low offer. And uh, usually he would be able to get the property. You could do something quite unique. You could come in there and you don't have to deal with the money. All you have to do is convince the seller to sign the easement in exchange for what you're promising. What would you be promising? He doesn't have to deal with the banks anymore. The foreclosure process, that's all gone away. You deal with all that. And all he has to do is pay you so much money per month to stay there. That's got to be the easiest deal ever to make. But yeah, it is. It is a, a numbers game. So. Does anybody want to ask me something? So that way I'm not just rambling on and on. 
Yeah, Alex. So uh, I've got a couple of questions for you. The first one is um, I was looking on the uh, MLS dot com um yeah. site in my area i recommend that for people too as well as uh home snap home snap yeah. home snap is actually home snap actually is now home.com by the way home.com uh, thanks thanks for that okay yeah uh also um so on the mls site they define foreclosure as properties listed as uh having passed the point of auction and public sale Ooh, and okay. that and that the and lender is now the owner so these are reo properties yeah, I don't know that you're going to be able to get the bank to agree because they're going to have to have an attorney represent the bank in a contract and give you an easement right. The bank's not going to do that. Right. So I'm going to pass those up. <laughs> you got uh, it. So then the it. other yeah, the other the question I, I had for you was um, that if I see some listings where the owner is not listed, but is listed as a defendant. Okay. Um, so is that because of a lien or, or how does that happen where the owner's not listed where uh, well they don't have an owner listed on on the site that but they'll have a, a plaintiff and a defendant uh you know well instead that just of tells that. you that the information came from two different sources and one source got it and one source didn't. but go by what you see in the court because those people have to get it right they have to sue the title holder. So they must have done the research to find out who the title holder was. So is that the title holder, the defendant? I would, oh yeah. It's gonna have to be literally the, the defendant, the name defendant. All, but all okay. you really care is to get his number. You just want accurate information so that if you want to go find out his number or go to his house or something, you know who you're talking to and how to get him. So somebody like that would still be in their house. Yep. If they're being sued, yeah. chances are they're still there. Now some people abandon the home and leave, you know. Right. Uh, right. But most people want to stay in their homes. If okay. it's an early case, uh, you got you got time. You got time. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, oh, great. Right. Got me. Okay. I mentioned it to you before, and uh, we talked about it the other morning. Now, if property, what's going on is these rock quarries are going up everywhere in Georgia and they're just taking everybody's land. And what yeah. happens to county commissioners rezone the property so that it can become, you know, properly zoned right so they can work out these deals behind the scenes, you know, for these rock quarries to take all these people's farmland. So the rezoning instead of eminent domain, see, they're not using eminent domain, just like in California. So they, they're weak. If they're not using eminent domain, they're not going to overcome the easement. They're not. They're not. If they use eminent domain, they can Okay, so that's what they're doing, rezoning to go in and work out sweetheart deal with these big rock, like Vulcan. You probably heard them. Well, they're big up here. Yeah. No, but and I know so, what you're talking about, yeah. Rezoning is just a gimmick to get around eminent domain rights. Yeah. These meetings are going on in the counties. There's five and 600 people in there raising hell with the county commission. They don't know what, they don't know what to do. They no, need they to don't file know. easements. Yeah, then you put easement on their farm, on their lands. And it goes on beyond just the land where the rock quarry is at because of the dust, the damage to the aquifers, the... The, the shock waves, you know, they did. They, they also need to file a, su a sue because they need to force the government to use eminent domain and, and stop trying to get around it. This is a this is a scam. The government, you know, I don't know the legal phrase for this, but the government needs to be required to use eminent domain instead of gimmicks to get around it. And then if these people put easements, the only other way to destroy an easement is to literally destroy the land. But that can be protected with the language in the easement. It could be okay, prevented. Okay. They're going to destroy the land. They're going to. Yeah. So what you oh, want yeah. to do in what you want to do in the easement is, is 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 explain that you enjoy the rights to use all minerals and things. Uh, even though that may not be binding because you don't you may not have the mineral rights, you could put it in the easement. What about the water? Like you have it, your water rights. Yeah, I mean, water like rights and because it ruins rights. everybody's wells. Everybody's wells go bad, yeah, and then even if your land now, is now that right there is damaging an easement. Without even having a recorded easement, if I, if you go in and you do what you say, you dig all these rock quarries and you destroy the water flow, you've destroyed my easement rights because I enjoyed the flow of that water. Right. Okay. That see, nobody knows that they're over there going. Ah! Yeah. But they yeah. don't understand that they have already easement rights that don't even have to be in words. They Did need it, to bring it, a, a case in for injunctive relief for trespass. You know, okay. trespass. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then claim the easement right, 
has to do with, and you might need a statement from a geologist, but an easement right has to do with the flow of water. And even though they may not be using the water, who's to, who's to say, right? So they can make the argument. Right, right, right. Wow. Because it affects, you know, it affects property long miles, from, I mean, many miles from the rock quarry. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, somebody just asked me um, about, uh, send it, okay, so this is a little off subject, but quit claim a house from your name to an LLC. Yeah, people do this all the time, right? So you have a mortgage, you pay property taxes, and then the house is in your name, and then you go to some lawyer and you do an estate plan, right? So the lawyer then sets up a trust and you convey the property. This is how most people do in Florida. You convey the property to this trust, but you still have a mortgage, but because you retain the beneficial interest, it doesn't evoke the due on sale clause in the mortgage. And yeah, you keep on paying everything. That's all you've done is you've taken the title out of your, your estate for estate plan purposes. I think that's the Garmin St. Germain Act. They can't call it due. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I didn't even know that uh, there was such yeah, a thing. I just think there were some there were some Fed regs I was familiar with. Yeah. Hang, hang on one second, I'll be right back. One second. Sorry about that. So, yeah, uh, they can they can just uh, exercise their but They have to they have to go to the court in this case because it's not in writing, right? So it's not a settled matter. So they have to go to the court and they have to argue it. So and good luck finding a lawyer who's confident to do that. I just have no faith in these creatures. Mm -hmm. Let's let's ask John what he's thinking. Hi, Jay. Hey, I was wondering, um, you talked about, uh, real quick, you said eminent domain can uh, uh, take over the easement, right? You said there's a way that if they yes. use eminent domain. Sure. So yes. if yeah. you would use a homeowners association um, thing in conjunction with an easement and put a, like a million dollar lien on the property, would they have to pay the lien to you if they got away through the easement? Yeah, they, if they're going to use eminent domain, they, they have to compensate the value of destroying the easement or changing the easement. Whatever, whatever rights you had that have to be changed, they have to compensate for the value of that. So if there's a homeowners association lien in effect that has, like when you said, we could uh, wait till somebody else takes title, then foreclose on the property if you had a homeowners association um, lien in effect. But you, you could actually put the yeah, yeah, you can I mean, put the homeowner associate lien on the property. Then if they come and try to blow up your easement, they would still have to pay you yeah. whatever the lien was. That would be another like uh, like a one-two punch, right? You'd have the easement and the HOA coming in on there. HOA covenant yeah. always has the last word. Yeah, you could do that. That would kind of double insulate your interest. That really would. Yeah, because if, if they somehow destroy the easement by destroying the land, um, then you still have the last word with the HOA. So. Yeah, so that would definitely be an alternative protection. Okay, thanks. Yeah, good point, yeah. So how much of this info are you share? Okay, Tim. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sharing, I'm just, look, I'm not even get, I'm not gonna show you guys my easement. I'm gonna sell it. And if you want me to write one for your project, I really hope you make millions of dollars, okay? I'm gonna charge you a fee to do an easement in your project, but you're gonna get rich off of it. I'm happy about that. And after a couple of you, you're gonna say, oh, we don't need John anymore, we know how to do this. Yay, great. So that's what I want to do. So I'm going to share with you. I mean, gosh, you would think my phone would be blown up, right? John, what was that, man? That's crazy. Let's do it. What do I have to do? Two people called me about that. <laughs> it's not that I have a big following, but that's another question. Like, what? I'm showing you guys how to do something that you can make a bunch of money with. This year, you can make a bunch of money. I mean, like, oh, gosh, I'm just going to say 10 grand a month. <laughs> If you can't make 10 grand a month like halfway doing this, then what are you doing? How much do you care? How much? All right, so um, you're asking me if I want to share with a group of a few hundred. I mean, the, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I mean, if you want to do, uh, do a special call, you know, we can be real specific. I'm still not going to give you my, you know, my trade secret. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how it can be used and the elements of it. Like for example, the elements of the easement I'm talking about don't just include the you know little one meter on the perimeter of your property. It includes the whole perimeter, right? The whole surface area. So, anyways, yeah. 
You got a spell. Come on, Jim. Are you asking me how much I charge for the easement? You're talking about an easement. Look, it's a lot of money. Ray's laughing. It's going to be a lot of money. No, it's reasonable. Rose, what do you think? This is uh, more of just a structural question, but you've mentioned in the past um, the possibility of setting up the LLC that would take possess, own the easement as the address of the place or whatever. So if we're doing this as an entrepreneur and we're going to have a portfolio of these, does it make sense to do them individually like that? And I guess I'm looking at what would what risk we're protecting and how it would benefit versus does the place where the rent is collected have to be the same as the place that owns the easement or how would that work no, no rent rent can be processed any way you want whatever's convenient to you as far as um acquiring the each parcel mm -hmm. yeah they should all be separate and what the risk let's identify the risk you threw a bunch of things at me at once the sorry risk, that's okay the risk has to do with the title okay so they're over here talking about the title that's that's a risk okay if you're not using the easement Everybody's over here squawking about the title, but we're over here with possession. Uh, it's already settled. It's a settled matter. We have a lien file. You guys can argue all you want about what you're going to do because you ain't going to do nothing because I have an easement. <laughs> okay? So we've solved the risk. We've gotten rid of all this risk by, by transferring our rights to the easement over here. And, and because we're on it and we were the first ones to record it, we win, if that helps. So then what do you want to do? Do you want to lease it out? Heck yeah. Get your standard lease agreement. It has to be changed a little bit because you're not talking about this title anymore. You gotta, you gotta do some rewording of it. But your standard lease agreement. Okay, thank you. All right, sure. Yeah, this is gonna work anywhere in the world. And by the way, so uh, I don't I don't send invoices out, guys. If you if you order something from me, just use my order form. I mean, that's a standing invoice, right? I don't do that stuff. Um yeah, easements will work anywhere in the world. Um, modern society functions on easements. We could not get things done. I mean, look, anywhere there's a vehicle, a car, we have easements. If you, so if you're living out somewhere in the woods, I don't know about that. But if you have sidewalks and streets, you got easements. You got easements, you got easements laws. Okay, so now it's just a matter of us using those laws and, and you know the right way it's the standard this is old old stuff okay this is centuries old alex what do you think so just to follow up on rose's question um uh, maybe this is just kind of naive but does the easement holder automatically have the right to lease the property because they're the easement holder what about what if the easement holder doesn't have the title? So can is the title holder going to dispute that and say, no, I'm renting it out? <laughs> the easement holder cannot have the title because then there will be no easement. Right, but they could get it later on, right? Uh, they could easement. get the use of the easement that was established through another party. Yes, you can certainly do that. Right. And, okay, so what, I would, what I'm doing in mind is I'm being very specific in my easement agreement that's very specific as to the use of the property without limiting myself, but being specific in that I can I can have tenants on the property under a lease agreement. I see. All right. So the title okay. holder is giving you yeah. the right to do that. Yes. That you, that you had that right as a title holder. And again, it's like I always say, you transfer that right to the easement. And, God, I'm, uh, and I'm going to spell it all out. Uh, it was never tricky. spelled out for title holder because we all accept <laughs> that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it. Thanks. <laughs> All right. This is going to be fun, you guys. Come on. I mean, what what piece of property in your neighborhood do you want? Have you ever thought of it would be nice to have that over there, that 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 shopping center? You never thought like that? I think like that. I would say that when we're driving in traffic and my and my children go, oh God. Look at that building. It looks so nice. It's got red brick and stuff. I'll bet it's been here for a hundred years. And they're like, yeah, okay, dad, whatever. Rose, did, what, did I cut you off? You have, no, no, it's a new question. And this oh, yeah. might be also naive, but um, I'm curious about what you think about 
if you know when this starts to catch on and there are several of us that are doing this and it's starting to become like the banks are starting to see it happening what their <laughs> response might be like how they might try to create carve outs to prevent this you know what they're going to be like they're going to be like that the fat kid at the football game who was benched because he's too fat they're going to they're going to be sitting on the sidelines and watching because those bastards have been using easements against us for centuries we just figured out how to use it against them. <laughs> I mean, imagine defeating BlackRock. How easy is that? Who else was it? BlackRock and Vanguard, those are creatures, right? They think they want to own everything. Um, so this, this, uh, your comment made it, brought up something that, that was mentioned to me the other day about competition. So yeah, people will see what you're doing if they're, if they're going to. And I hope, I hope there's enough intelligent people that aren't lazy and that see what you're doing and say, I want to know what you're doing. And maybe you don't want to tell them. And so they figured out anyways, you know why? Because they, they're smart and they went and figured out what you're doing. They went to the county rec recorder's office and they found out your easement that you recorded last week. And they got a copy of it for a bucket page. And they read it and they said, holy cow, I could do this too. So by the time any of you will have competition, if you even care, I wouldn't even care about this. It's going to be two years from now. It's going to be six months from now. They're going to be so far behind. You'll already make your first million. This is my estimation when I was talking to this couple. You'll make your first million dollars uh, before someone even comes close to even think about how to compete with you. Because I'm telling you this stuff now. I say, yeah, it's a numbers game. Use the yellow letter. You know, talk to them. You're going to find out there's like a hundred other things you're going to have to figure out what to do for yourself to get to that moment where a person says, heck yeah, I'm going to sign that easement. Okay. And I can't tell you what those are. You just have to go through it. So yeah, there will be competition and great. That's great because look, there are 10,000 cities roughly. There are 10,000 cities in 50 states and there are roughly 3,600 counties. Did I get that right? I think I got that right. 3,600 counties. If you just worked on one county in a state, you could be a multimillionaire in three years doing this. I mean, imagine you, you acquire all this, this, the use of this property, right? And as you're approaching the three years, and three years is a pretty big number because I don't think it's going to be more, I, think, I don't think it's going to be more than 18 months, but the title holders are going to have to abandon their interest. They can't, there's nothing they can do except throw good money after bad. They're stopped. The title aspect of property ownership that we've been worshiping for centuries goes away. And you can, if you want, go reclaim the title just to do it, right? Clear up the title. It's called a quiet title action. Once the title's quiet, you can take it. John? Yeah. A uh, question about that. Is there any downside risk for this? Like Let me once think. you get risk, in? Risk, risk, I mean, <clears throat> uh, let's well, say- let, Well, let me tell you what I'm thinking. Like, so, what, yeah, what, what do you think? What if you were to simply pay the current, you know, title holder, to give you a you could do that too sure. so i could just be, say hey I, I want to acquire a bunch of property here's 20k you know for your you, entire property if you, you could ask them for an easement. easement you can ask them for an easement uh that you will not exercise until a certain date for x dollars who wouldn't agree to that yeah i mean if they're gonna get kicked out anyway maybe they'd rather just well, have a lump sum what if a person is selling his house and he wants to move everything's cool and you come along and you offer this. What he's doing is he's leaving, he's leaving all his rights to the next one who wants to claim it and, and have possession. And the, and the one who takes the title after him is gonna to have to deal with that. Now keep in mind, why would someone do that and try and sell his property? He might actually damage his property, right? If someone's reading the public record, who would wanna buy property at that point? So there's that aspect of it. But as far as like risk goes, I mean, I mean, it's a settled matter, right? So even if someone sued you over the matter, what would they sue you for? Well, fraud? How's yeah, that fraud? I just meant for the purpose yeah. of like getting someone to agree to give you an easement, like a distressed person. Okay. So that's just a sales process. So it's not really a risk. It's just a, the difficulty of converting a sale. You tell me, cause I don't know what the numbers would be on this yet. I mean, sure. I, I kind of know what they are on real estate anyway. I mean, they're, they're pretty low, just like anything else. 
but what about the way we're doing it? It's going to be interesting. Yeah. 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 I don't know what other kinds of risk. I mean, I always try to think of that, like what could happen, you know? So, <laughs> all right. So Alex, what's the... Uh, so I had one more question. Sorry to be hogging up all the time yeah. with my questions, but yeah. uh, about that question about what do you think the banks would do or what do you think the reaction would be? Couldn't the banks write something in maybe in the future to mortgages on a widespread level that the title holder cannot okay. give, give away? Good question. All right, good question. So when would the bank be in a position to issue an easement? Well, they wouldn't unless they have the title. And when right. do they get the title? When what unique situation do the banks get the title? When you foreclose. When they take possession or ownership take of it. it through a real estate owned auction where right. no one bids, right? So at that point, the banks can issue an easement. To but they can't us. they can't they just write into a mortgage that this is going to be now a standard thing no. where you're not no. allowed to no give mortgages that up. only have to do with claims on the title. Oh, it has okay. nothing to do with possession and easement rights. Okay. Totally separate. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, That's they'd great. have to they'd have to kind of do what <laughs> we're doing before we do it. And and what how why would they do that? And how and they probably could. I'd be yeah. curious to see how that works out. Yeah. Okay. Be, Just curious. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, look, um, if you're gonna do something like this. I, I, for myself, I'm not going to go look for a uh, single family. I, I want to look for the big uh, catch. I want uh, a multifamily. I want an apartment complex with 400 units, 4,000 units. Well, I don't care how big it is. I want the apartment complex. Whatever I can negotiate with somebody. I want a strip mall because I have some ideas on how to use a strip mall when nobody cares about strip malls anymore. I have an idea on what we can do. I'm not going to tell you guys. Uh, but anyways, what about farmland? Huh? Farmland. What can we do with that? What do you think, Christian? Can you give me some ideas? Hey, so <clears throat> I was wondering about the HOA mm -hmm. and if you could create a situation where you almost want the bank to take title. Would they owe you the HOA dues? And you yeah. have the easement? So you would yeah. have, yeah. you could get paid to stay on your property. It wouldn't work out that way. I mean, let's see. Where the, so the bank takes it, but then owes the HOA. You know what these guys did? The banks never paid the HOAs. The HOAs had every right to collect the money from the banks, and they let them get away without paying. Mm -hmm. That's what I read about after the foreclosure crisis. So yeah, you're right, but this is the rea The reality is these guys, they really, look, this whole system is to impoverish us. We, we need to just step up. and. So yeah. now when, when a local municipality takes the property in a tax foreclosure, are they not on the hook for the HOA fees either? They certainly are. They certainly are. Now, I don't know if there's an exemption for a municipality. I, I'd have to check the statutes for that because they, you would find it in your HOA statutes if there's an exemption. Hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. So um, I would just go out there and uh, do what I'm suggesting. Go look for that one deal. One, just one. Or try to get yourself a half dozen single family residentials that are close to where you live. Maybe, maybe you like riding your bike every other day and you go out there and you get your home snap or whatever and you do that on your phone. Go back home, analyze the properties, go there the next day, right? Here's another idea. You keep talking, I'll get some more. What about that guy in your neighborhood that's got that truck and you see that he has a sign that says Joe's Landscaping or something, right? And he has got the equipment in the trailer and all that stuff. Maybe he's doing residential jobs. How much, how much would he be willing to work with you on a joint venture where he would let you use his customer list in some way? He already knows who the people are, right, that take care of their yards. So it's just something to think about. Elaine, what do you think? Hi, sorry. Hey, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, this is still kind of a little overwhelming, but um, uh, the, somebody asked earlier if you could claim the title 
And I wonder what would be the advantage to that? It seems like the advantage is in having the easement. You're right. There's no need to get the title. However, if it's me, uh, I would wait until the title's quiet and then I would take it. And that would take within two years, I would think. They would finally realize there's nothing they can do. And can you explain what it means the title is quiet? That means no one's making a claim on it. No one's foreclosing on it. No one's trying to do something. No one's okay. suing. Yeah. Okay. There's no dispute over the title. Nobody cares anymore. <laughs> yeah. And you're gonna, you're gonna post this, right? Because this I yeah I'm gonna, I I'm gonna need to digest this, this again. Yeah, I'm gonna publish this one. I, I published the last one I think on YouTube, so I hope you guys like that one. Yeah. All right, Christian, what do you think? Hey, okay. So um, if if there's a HOA lien on a property and the bank takes it, do they have to satisfy the lien before they can? They do. They inherit the lien, yes. Okay. And then the same with the muni, because they never take title. I think so, unless they're exempt. They're. I'm just. I just. I'm just thinking a government uh, office would be exempt if it's in the statute that way. I would think it would be. Okay. Why do you have a situation like that? No, I'm just thinking like if. You, like in a situation where you would want the bank to take it, but you can force them to take okay. it back. Well, yeah. okay, so here's what we would use. It would not be a, a homeowner's due. Okay, so the the HOA dues simply gives the HOA a cause of action. It doesn't mean they're going to get paid. It just gives them the right to sue. What if we had a special assessment? Now, I like the special assessment idea because that's whopping like right in the face, like, I'm not going to buy this property for a quarter million dollars and then my special assessment's a quarter million dollars just so I can get in the property. Cash, I can't finance that. I'm not going to buy that. So deal, deal's done, right? I get my title back. But um, these, uh, the special assessment, you could foreclose upon the city for failing to pay it. Mm -hmm. That would make sense. I don't see how they can get around that. Okay, that's interesting. All right, thank you. You might have to do some, there might be some additional notice requirements to get past um, the immunity, but you could do it. So, yeah. If they're so bold as to take some title of property, then all right. Welcome to the party. <laughs> You're like everybody else. So, yeah, go right ahead and, and get your list. I would just make it a bit of a hobby, right? Just as an activity, maybe a couple hours a week, look around, be aware. Look when you're driving around. Be aware of what you see, you know, signs for sale. Uh, I don't think you're going to see any foreclosure signs, but um, things of that nature. So look at, find some, there's some property in my neighborhood where um, everything's overgrown. It uh, looks pretty bad. And um, I could just go over there and knock on the door and probably nobody will answer. And then I could just go look up on public records. I could probably use HomeSnap. I could find out where the owner is. Hopefully the owner's still getting mail. I have to send some mail, you know. A homeowner's probably already getting mail. So, you know, it's, it's a bit of work. But if I pick five homes here and I try that, I could probably find five tonight. Uh, that you guys could too, probably, depending on your neighborhood. All right. Well, I hope you do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close it for tonight. Appreciate everyone's questions. They were pretty good questions. Hope that opens up some thinking here. Clears your mind. Go out there and have some fun. Help some people. Help some people, get paid for your time, get paid for your being smart at this stuff. You got something no one else is offering right now. We can help these farmers. That'd be awesome. That would be great. I'd love to help any of you guys that want me, huh? That would be great. Yeah. The farmers. All right. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Ranchers, farmers, yeah. Yeah, because they're put, they're doing conservation easements. Biden administration is coming in and pulling it in states where they're taking you know control of large tracts of land. E easements are by consent, so they're they're doing something. They're like paying a lot of money. I, I have a client right now that did one, uh, but it was a pretty good deal. They, they weren't trying to exploit them or anything. But uh, yeah, they'll pay you for it. So, well, good. I like to hear some stories, but uh, um, I mean, we'll cover this again. But there's there's a long list of things I wanted to cover. I might do. Just I'm, I'm finding myself needing to do more videos in between our weeklies. And I'm going to do that because a lot of things are coming up and there's a lot of it's coming up fast. But I am having I'm going to have a series on the security agreement. It's going to be a course from beginning to end. I've got a course on the post of uh, the post nuptial agreement. It's I got a few more episodes to do, but I'm going to keep on adding throughout the year. Those are all going to be separate subscriptions. I have to do that because it's totally new content. 
I am going to have a course on the homeowners association. Uh, I'm going to give you examples on each place in the country, not every place, but you know, various places. And then, of course, on this easement thing, I'm just talking about let's promoting it, right? I want people to be aware that this is out there, that we're talking about this. And now I'm going to do a course. And I, I'm going to teach you how to write the easement, why to put certain things in there, how to phrase it, how to talk to people, how to explain it. If some, you know, at Thanksgiving dinner, one of your relatives is a lawyer and he, he hears you're doing that, he's going to criticize you because he didn't think of it. And <laughs> you'll, ha you'll have the language of how to have that conversation and maybe educate some people. Right. So definitely we're, we're, I have a lot of material to, to uh, put together working on that now. And plus, I got to take apart the state bar. So that's my fun project. Tear them apart. You guys will love this stuff. I can show you. So. <laughs> All right. Enjoy your weekend, y'all. All right. Thanks, John. Thank All you. Right. Bye bye.